Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new playlist called In The News. Uh, this is where I'm going to be publishing videos that track the latest announcements from VeloCloud, uh, especially when it comes to new features or code releases. And we start today uh, by talking about SASE, uh, Secure Access Service Edge, a term that uh, Gardner coined a few months back and made uh, uh, most vendors shift their strategy and move towards this goal. Um, SASE is a security framework. It's a combination of network elements uh, such as SD1, uh, WAN optimization, uh, band aggregation, combined together with cloud delivered security functions such as cloud web gateway, VPN, um, data loss uh, prevention, CASB, DNS security. If you watch some of my previous videos, I mentioned how the transition to SD1 and local breakout plus the shift to the cloud is forcing everyone to rethink security. Uh, because backhauling everything to the DC and breaking out centrally out of a cluster of firewalls is no longer optimal. Uh, this so-called castle and moat architecture uh, fails in two big ways. First of all, it introduces suboptimal routing. Uh, more and more traffic is no longer headed to the DC. Right, it's going to the cloud. It might it might be guest traffic, etc. Uh, so you are um, cre creating congestion on your WAN links and uh, inadvertently increase the carrier costs by backhauling everything to a location that is no longer the end destination of the traffic. Also, this suboptimal routing increases latency and jitter, uh, and this negatively impacts business critical real time applications. Secondly, this architecture doesn't account for remote or home users. And unfortunately, this year's events have accelerated this trend of working from home, and this is predicted to continue. So uh, what is VeloCloud doing about this? I mean, uh, so far we have uh, worked uh, to integrate um, with the best in breed from the security landscape, whatever that Zscaler, Checkpoint, Palo Alto, or Fortinet, and this is set to continue. Um, the engineering teams are uh, working hard to make the process even simpler and uh, even more automated. Uh, but uh, if you ever saw some of the roadmap sessions that the product team is doing on platforms such as Brightalk, for example, you'll hear them talking about the plan to uh, utilize existing VMware security and uh, offer it as a service out of the VeloPops. Um, so these are the places in which today we host our gateways. Your traffic is going there anyways, if you're using the MVS or the SaaS gateways, uh, and adding an extra layer of security uh, is the most uh, scalable way of rolling it out. Uh, this is opposed to having a separate firewall on site, which is obviously expensive and hard to manage, uh, or implementing next-gen uh, firewall capabilities and um, decreasing the performance of the box itself. Expect more announcements on this at VMworld, which uh, this year is uh, virtual, surprise, surprise, and actually uh, free for anyone to join. Um, so if you have a, a bit of time in September, I do recommend you check it out and uh, join the VeloCloud sessions there. But what about uh, all these uh, remote users that cannot use an edge to be part of the kind of SD1 fabric and access all the resources? I mean, I'm lucky that I have an edge at home and, uh, you know, I can connect that with side-to-side uh, -side VPN with the rest of the estate. But what happened if I didn't have it or um, maybe I was traveling or working out of a customer site? The option so far is... Um, to integrate VeloCloud with another separate client VPN solution, because the edges themselves do not have native client VPN capabilities. There are lots of vendors out there that do uh, cool client VPN offerings. I uh, mean, VMware owns Workspace ONE, which is a rebrand uh, of AirWatch, uh, which is the highest rated uh, endpoint management solution out there. And Workspace ONE has this idea of tunneling. So you install the agent on your devices um, and then you spin off in your DCs in the DMZ a VPN concentrator. They call it a UAG, Unified Access Gateway. The UAG will authenticate the users and if the authentication is successful, it will only give them access to the right resources. And the question is, how many UAGs do you need? Uh, because you want to keep things simple, you want to keep them cost 
efficient. So the first thought would be, you know, get a pair of them for redundancy and that's it. Um, but this creates problems, especially if you are uh, working across continents, if you have workforce uh, in different parts of the world or in multiple countries, um, because having just one pair or a couple means increased latency and degraded performance. So you really want to plan to have multiple UAGs spread around as close as possible to your um, end users. But obviously this is costly, this is uh, expensive to install, expensive to maintain. You need to get your server, you need to have your uh, you know, hypervisor uh, and the licenses, and you, know, you need to install and maintain all that. So it makes perfect sense that VMware uh, will be looking for a smart way to integrate both Workspace ONE and VeloCloud to fulfill this idea that they always had about any application going to any uh, cloud uh, from any device. So it doesn't matter where you come from, if you are at the branch or if you're remote or traveling or at home, you'll have access to the same resources and the same policies uh, that everyone else in the company has. In order to simplify this, um, we will be taking the UAG element and deploy it as a service inside the VeloPops pops themselves. So we'll have a pair of UAGs, uh, we'll spin off a pair of edges as well, and this gives you the ability not only to use the edge firewall option for your um, remote workers, uh, but also point them uh, to any of the sites you want them to get to. So the edge itself will have the same ability to do site-to-site -site VPN. Uh, it will be able to talk to SaaS and NVS gateways. It will be able to send the traffic to Zscaler, for example, or to any sort of DCs or AWS and Azure. And in the future, uh, also benefit from the native um, next generation security offered in the same locations. Now, what you see here is a soft launch uh, ahead of the official one at VMworld. From a technical perspective, this is fully functional, but the engineering team is busy doing the last touches and making it more scalable. So if you have a few minutes, um, I recommend you check out the Zero Trust Service Brief. This is how the solution is called. Get acquainted with the basics and then join us at VMworld to find out more.